Eric Mussum the 6th of April 1878 to the 10th of July 1934, was a German Jewish antimilitarist, anarchist, essayist, poet, and playwright. He emerged at the end of World War I as one of the leading agitators for a federated Bavarian Soviet Republic, for which he served five years in prison. Also a cabaret performer, he achieved international prominence during the years of the Weimar Republic for works which, before Hitler came to power in 1933, condemned Nazism and satirized the future dictator. Mussum was murdered in the Oranienburg concentration camp in 1934. Topic. Biography Topic. Early life, 1878–1900 The third child born to Siegfried Seligman Mussum, a middle-class Jewish pharmacist, Eric Mussum was born in Berlin on 6 April 1878. Soon after, the family moved to the city of Lübeck. Mussum was educated at the Catherineum Gymnasium in Lübeck, a school known for its authoritarian discipline and corporal punishment, which served as the model for several of the settings in Thomas Mann's novel Buddenbrooks 1901. The young student Eric, who was by nature rebellious and resisted the school's regimented program, was often physically punished. It was in the spirit of this resistance that, in January 1896, Mussum authored an anonymous submission to the Lübecker Volksbaden, denouncing one of the school's more unpleasant teachers, which caused a scandal. When his identity became known, Mussum was expelled from the Catherineum Gymnasium for sympathizing and participating in socialist activities. He completed his education in Parcham. From an early age, Mussum displayed a talent for writing and desired to become a poet, a career aspiration his father sought to beat out of him, his juvenilia consisted of animal fables, and he was first published at the age of 16, earning small amounts of money for satirical poems based on local news and political happenings. However, at the insistence of his father, young Eric set out to study pharmacy, a profession which he quickly abandoned to return to his poetic and literary ambitions. Mussum left Lübeck for Berlin to pursue a literary career, later writing of his youth that my hatred grows when I look back on it and visualize the unspeakable flailings which were supposed to beat out of me all my innate feelings. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Poet, writer, anarchist, 1900 to 1918. Mussum moved to Berlin in 1900, where he soon became involved in a group called Neue Gemeinschaft New Society under the direction of Julius and Heinrich Hart which combined socialist philosophy with theology and communal living in the hopes of becoming a forerunner of a socially united great working commune of humanity. Within this group, Mussum became acquainted with Gustav Landauer who encouraged his artistic growth and compelled the young Mussum to develop his own activism based on a combination of communist and anarchist political philosophy that Landauer introduced to him. Desiring more political involvement, in 1904, Mussum withdrew from Neue Gemeinschaft and relocated temporarily to an artist's commune in Ascona, Switzerland where vegetarianism was mixed with communism and socialism. It was here that he began writing plays, the first Die Hochstapler the Con Men, juxtaposing new modern political theory within traditional dramatic forms, which became a typical trademark of his dramatic work. During these years, Mussum began contributing to and editing several anarchist journals. These writings made Mussum the target of constant police surveillance and arrests as he was considered among the most dangerous anarchist agitators in Germany. The press seized the opportunity to portray him as a villain accused of anarchist conspiracies and petty crimes. In 1908, Mussum relocated to Munich, where he became heavily involved in cabaret. While Mussum did not particularly care for his work in writing cabaret songs, it would become among his most famous creations. In 1911, Mussum founded the newspaper, Cain, as a forum for anarcho-communist ideologies, stating that it would be a personal organ for whatever the editor, as a poet, as a citizen of the world, and as a fellow man had on his mind." Mussum used Cain to ridicule the German state and what he perceived as excesses and abuses of authority, standing out in favor of abolishing capital punishment, and opposing the government's attempt at censoring theater, and offering prophetic and perceptive analysis of international affairs. For the duration of World War I, publication was suspended to avoid government-imposed censorship often enforced against private newspapers that disagreed with the imperial government and the war. 
Musum married Kresentia Elfinger nicknamed Zenzel, the widowed daughter of a Bavarian farmer, in 1915. World War I would see the international anarchist community starkly divided into pro-war and anti-war positions, some hypernationalistically supporting Germany, others desiring that Germany's enemies the United Kingdom, France, and later the United States of America would be victorious. Musum became extremely nationalistic and militant in his support of Germany in the war, writing in his diaries, "...and I the anarchist, the anti-militarist, the enemy of national slogans, the anti-patriot and implacable critic of the armament furies, I discovered myself somehow possessed by the common intoxication, fired by an irate passion." His public support of the war was seized upon by the state-controlled press for the purposes of propaganda, and by fellow anarchists who felt betrayed. However, by the end of 1914, Musum, pressured by his anarchist acquaintances renounced his support of the war effort, stating that, "...I will probably have to bear the sin of betraying my ideals for the rest of my life," and appealing, "...those who comfortably acquiesce and say, we cannot change things shamefully desecrate human dignity and all the gifts of their own hearts and brain." For they renounce without a struggle every use of their ability to overthrow man made institutions and governments and to replace them with new ones. For the rest of the war, Musum opposed the war through increased involvement in many direct action projects, including workers' strikes, often collaborating with figures from other leftist political parties. As the strikes became increasingly successful and violent, the Bavarian state government began mass arrests of anti war agitators. Musum was among those arrested and incarcerated in April 1918. He would be detained until just before the war's end in November 1918. <laughs> Weimar years, 1918–1933 When Eric Musum was released on 3 November 1918, he returned to Munich. Within days, Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany abdicated as did King Ludwig III who had semi-autonomous rule in Bavaria, and Munich was in the throes of revolt. Kurt Eisner of the Independent Socialist Party declared Bavaria a socialist republic during the Red Bavaria Revolution. Eisner, in a gesture designed to bring the anarchists into the new government, offered a ministry position to Musum, who refused, preferring to fight along with Gustav Landauer, Ernst Toller, Rett Marut, and other anarchists for the development of workers' councils Soviets and communes. However, after Eisner's assassination in 1919, the Bayerische Räterepublik Bavarian Soviet Republic was proclaimed, ruled by independent socialist Ernst Toller and anarchists Gustav Landauer and Erich Musum. This government was short-lived, lasting six days, being overthrown by communists led by Eugen Levine. However, during this time, the Bavarian Soviet Republic declared war on Switzerland, resulting from the inexplicable machinations of a mentally ill foreign affairs deputy who became irate at Switzerland's refusal to lend the new republic's government 60 locomotive engines. When the Weimar Republic's Freikorps, a right-wing army commanded by Gustav Nosk, crushed the rebellion and took possession of Munich, Gustav Landauer was killed and Musum arrested and sentenced to 15 years in jail. While in jail, Musum was very prolific with his writing, completing the play Judas 1920, and a large number of poems. In 1924, he was released from jail as the Weimar Republic granted a general amnesty for political prisoners. Also released in this amnesty was Adolf Hitler, who had served eight months of a five-year sentence for leading the Beer Hall Putsch in 1923. The Munich to which Musum returned was very different from the one he left after his arrest. The people were largely apathetic, in part because of the economic collapse of Germany under the pressure of reparations for World War I and hyperinflation. He had attempted to restart the journal Kane which failed after a few issues. In 1926, Musum founded a new journal which he called Fanel the Torch, in which he openly and precariously criticized the communists and the far right-wing conservative elements within the Weimar Republic. During these years, his writings and speeches took on a violent, revolutionary tone, and his active attempts to organize a united front to oppose the radical right provoked intense hatred from conservatives and nationalists within the republic. Musum specifically targeted his writings to satirize the growing phenomenon of Nazism, which later raised the ire of Adolf Hitler and Joseph Goebbels. 
Die Affenschind a short story, ridiculed the racial doctrines of the Nazi party, while the poem Republikanische Nationalheim attacked the German judiciary for its disproportionate punishment of leftists while barely punishing the right-wing participants in the putsch. In 1928, Erwin Piscator produced Musam's third play, Staatsrasen for reasons of state, based upon the controversial conviction and execution of Nicola Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti in the United States. In 1930, Musam completed his last play Alla Wetter All Hang, which sought mass revolution as the only way to prevent a radical right-wing seizure of power. This play, never performed in public, was directed exclusively at criticizing the Nazis who were on the rise politically in Germany. Topic: <laughs> Arrest and death. Musum was arrested on charges unknown in the early morning hours of the 28th of February 1933, within a few hours after the Reichstag fire in Berlin. Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister, labeled him as one of those Jewish subversives. It is alleged that Musum was planning to flee to Switzerland within the next day. Over the next 17 months, he would be imprisoned in the concentration camps at Sonnenberg, Brandenburg and finally, Oranienburg. Marinus van der Lubbe, an alleged communist agitator, was arrested and blamed for the fire, and his association with communist organizations led Adolf Hitler to declare a state of emergency, encouraging aging President Paul von Hindenburg to sign the Reichstag Fire Decree, abolishing most of the human rights provisions of the Weimar Republic's Constitution 1919. Hitler used the state of emergency to justify the arrests of large numbers of German intellectuals labeled as communists, socialists, and anarchists in both retaliation for the attack and to silence opposition for his increasing suppression of civil liberties. After breaking his teeth with musket blows, stamping a swastika on his scalp with a red-hot brand, subjecting him to tortures which caused him to be taken into a hospital, even now the fascist hyenas of the Sonnenberg concentration camp continue their beastly attacks upon this defenseless man. The last news are really atrocious, the Nazi forced our comrade to dig his own grave and then with a simulated execution made him go through the agony of a doomed man. Although his body has been reduced to a mass of bleeding and tumefied flesh, his spirit is still very high. When his traducers tried to force him to sing the Horst Wessel Lied, the Nazi's anthem, he defied their anger by singing the Internationale. On the 2nd of February 1934, Musum was transferred. The beatings and torture continued until finally, on the night of the 9th of July 1934, Musum was tortured and murdered by the guards. His battered corpse found hanging in a latrine the next morning. An official Nazi report dated the 11th of July stated that Eric Musum committed suicide, hanging himself while in protective custody at Oranienburg. However, a report from Prague on the 20th of July 1934 in the New York Times stated otherwise. His widow declared this evening that, when she was first allowed to visit her husband after his arrest, his face was so swollen by beating that she could not recognize him. He was assigned to the task of cleaning toilets and staircases and storm troopers amused themselves by spitting in his face, she added. On July 8, she saw him for the last time alive. Despite the tortures he had undergone for 15 months, she declared, he was cheerful, and she knew at once when his suicide was reported to her three days later that it was untrue. When she told the police that they had murdered him, she asserted they shrugged their shoulders and laughed. A post-mortem examination was refused, according to Frau Musum, but storm troopers, incensed with their new commanders, showed her the body which bore unmistakable signs of strangulation, with the back of the skull shattered as if Herr Musum had been dragged across the parade ground. After the death, publications would accuse Theodor Eich, the former commander of the concentration camp at Dachau, as the murderer, aided by two Sturmabteilung storm troopers officers identified as Erith and Konstantin Werner. It was alleged that he was tortured and beaten until he lost consciousness, followed by an injection that killed him, and that Musam's body was taken to a latrine in the rear of the building and hung on a rafter so as to create the impression that Musam had committed suicide. Bibliography Books Die Eigenen Rata Republic 1929 Die Befreiung der Gesellschaft vom Staat 1932 Unpolitische Erinnerungen Trans Unpolitical Remembrances 1931 An Autobiography 
Liberating Society from the State and Other Writings 2011 Comprehensive Selection of Muslim Texts in English, edited and translated by Gabriel Kuhn Topic. Plays Die Hochstapeler The Con Men 1904. I'm Nach them Dirch's Leben 1914. Die Frievermalten 1914. Judas 1920. Stotzrasen Reasons of State 1928 Alla Wetter All Hang 1930 Topic Poetry Der War Jacob 1901 Die Wust 1904 Der Revoluzer 1908 Der Crater 1909 Wust Crater Woken 1914 Brinende Erde 1920 Republicanisch Nationalhymn 1924 Revolution Kampf Marsch und Spotleader 1925 Topic Journals and Periodicals Kane Zeitschrift für Menschlichkeit Kane Magazine for Humanity 1911 to 1914 1918 1919 1924 Brief Panel The Torch 1926 to 1933 Contributed to Anarchist Journals Der Freie Arbeiter The Free Worker Der Weckruf The Alarm Call Der Anarchist The Anarchist Neue Gemeinschaft New Community and Kampf Struggle and edited Der Armee Teufel the Poor Devil under the pseudonym Nolo. Topic see also Holocaust Weimar Culture Topic References Topic Background Information Lawrence Barron, The Eclectic Anarchism of Eric Musum, New York, Revisionist Press, 1976, part of the series, Men and Movements in the History and Philosophy of Anarchism ISBN 0-87700-228-2 David Shepard, From Bohemia to the Barricades, Eric Musum and the Development of Revolutionary Drama, New York, P. Lang, 1993. ISBN 0-8204-2122-7 Diana Conan, Das Literarische Werk Eric Musams, Kritik und Utopische Antizipation, Trans. The Literary Works of Eric Musam, Critique and Utopian Anticipation, Berlin, Königshausen and Newman, 1988. ISBN 3-88479-414-0 Rolf Kaufelt, Eric Musam, Literature und Anarchie, Trans. Eric Musum, Literature and Anarchy, Munich, W. Fink, 1983. ISBN 3-7705-2139-0 External links Die Eric Musum Site Trans. The Eric Musum Site — A selection of poems by Musum Eric Musum page at Daily Bleeds Anarchist Encyclopedia Complete German texts of selected works by Musum Eric Musum, Judas Complete German text Guide to the Eric Musum Collection Archival Materials by and about Musum at the Leo Back Institute, New York Musum Family Genealogy The Revolutioner, English translation of poem, Der Revoluzer, by Eric Musum Works by or about Eric Musum at Internet Archive Works by Eric Musum at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Newspaper clippings about Eric Musum in the 20th Century Press Archives of the German National Library of Economics ZBW.